ఏంటి వెరీ వెరీ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఆల్ అండ్ వెరీ వామ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద సెషన్ సో హ్యాపీ అండ్ ఎక్సైటెడ్ టు మీట్ యూ టుడే so today we are going to see the recent mcqs or the current trend of mcq questions for your upcoming examination so always if you observe the questions carefully you all will be uh, know very quickly uh, familiarizing yourself that always there will be a trend of questions so previous year questions especially the recent questions are very very important for your preparation all right guys so very happy everyone so in this evening we are going to have a fruitful discussion on the recent trend mcq questions this is little bit about me if at all you have following me for the first time i am glad to introduce myself i am dr saranya i have completed my phd in biomaterials i was working with scaffolds for tissue engineering applications i have 15 papers to my credit and i have been working with an academy for a long time and i am into teaching for the past 10 years yes selva yes nilanchana himanshi okay nice everybody so i have qualified net obviously and set as well right so let us take the first question of the day okay everybody so see this question very very carefully so consider the following graphs okay so you're going to consider the following graph okay right so just a moment i will take my pen okay right i think this is fine so this is at the growth rate 1 by n into dn by dt so this is giving a clue maybe next time they may ask some more graphical questions yes yes nilanjana for one year i'll display the fees for you yes absolutely for one year it is coming around 13 okay so 12 to 13 it will come so it depends upon the offers that is running on nilanjana so uh, please do wait till the uh, middle i will be projecting the exact fees and they do have some uh, limited offer period so if you subscribe using that you will get a better benefit got it yes shiba trisha nice everybody okay so coming to the first question it is like 1 by n into dn by dt okay right so they have given them in the function of per capita growth rate okay yes yes nilanjana 12 to 13k exactly nilanjana so for one year okay you will get notes everything inside that okay so coming back here what do you mean by per capita growth rate so per capita growth rate is going to be your r okay right so it is the intrinsic rate of increase that is going to be this r okay right yes so that is what it is given in the y axis in the x axis they have given n what do you mean by n n is going to be the population density so what is going to be this n this n is going to be the population density got it everybody okay fantastic so now you can see that there are four graph okay so this is graph a graph b b is here ha uh, so see they have changed the order so you should be very very careful ha uh, so they have not put in a perfect order now they have changed the order usually whenever we take the options we will have a preference like a okay why this is not writing okay so like this is going to be your a why just a moment guys okay this this is going to be a usually we feel this is b right but carefully see this is c option this is the b option this is the d option likewise one more year also one question came of this kind okay so they gave this a b c d in a jumbled manner we always process in our own way if you do that kind of processing it is it is going to uh, make you a negative marking so be careful while selecting the options okay so coming back here to this question the first graph it is it is like a declining one okay this graph it is like increasing and then decreasing this graph it is independent right even though the density is increasing this is constant here it is going to decline okay right fine so now they are asking which one represents the strong allele i again and again i told everybody you have to look that this is option a this is option c this is option b and this is option d which option is correct which option is correct it is going to have a strong allele no strong allele should be your c got it 
Yes, ha. Strong allele should be your C. C is the correct answer for this question. It is going to be the strong allele. Okay, so don't worry. Yes, Shiba, Rumi, correct everybody. Exactly. So let us see in detail about what is this allele effect and what this question is all about. Okay, very quickly we will see this. Don't worry. So this allele effects, it is nothing but. It is a density dependent phenomenon. Okay, so if it is going to be straight, uh, does that that represent any meaning to us? Huh? If it is going to be a straight line, that means that it is density independent, right? It is density independent. If it is a straight line, it is going to be density independent. So it is not going to uh, not give the proper value. Got it? Yes. So that is why I eliminated the B option first. Okay. Yeah, it is independent. No, so we are going to eliminate that uh, B option first. Right. So allelic effects. It is always density dependent. So the population growth. Okay, it is it is going to be dependent on the density. If the density is increasing, ah, uh, this effect is also increasing. How you will see the effect? It is related with the per capita growth rate. Okay, right. So if at all, yes, if at all, you see that there is going to be no allele effect. What is that? If at all, there is going to be no allele effect. Right. If there is going to be no allele effect, then what happens? Even though the density is increasing, your per capita growth rate is decreasing. That means that the allele effect is not at all there. Got it? Okay. So this is quite simple to understand. But the major point is the distinction between the weak allele and the strong allele. Okay. So I will tell you a trick to determine which is the weak allele, which is the strong allele. See, when the density is zero. Okay. Right. So how is your weak allele? See, how is your weak allele? It is also zero. No, no. Weak allele has some value. Got it? It is not starting from zero. Yes or no? Do you agree with this? If it is going to be a weak allele, listen carefully. If it is going to be a weak allele, it is not beginning with zero. Even though the density is zero, it is beginning somewhere above the line. Can you see here? Yes, this is your uh, density. But your weak allele is beginning here. It is above the zero level. So this is what is going to be the weak allele because both of them, they look somewhat similar. Okay, right. So you cannot distinguish properly. That is why I am telling you this trick. In case of the strong allele, what happens if the density is zero, this per capita growth rate is also zero. Got it? When the density is zero, the per capita growth rate, it is also going to be somewhere near zero. So the strong allele effect means that the per capita growth rate, it is negative whenever the density is zero. Okay, so when the density is zero, uh, your strong allele represents that it is going to go in the negative manner. This per capita, this is zero. Okay, so this per capita is going in the negative below the zero. Here it is above the zero. No, here it is going to be below the zero. Below the zero means it is going to be negative. Got the point? So if it is below the zero means it is negative. Whenever your density is zero, right? This per capita growth rate is below the uh, level. It is negative. But in case of weak allele, it is above. Now you got the distinction when it is going to be a strong allele and when it is going to be a weak allele, right? So now can you tell me? Huh? So now you are going to tell me this graph. Okay? Everybody in this class. Right. Fine. So here, uh, what is this number one telling? Do you get anything out of this graph? Is it related to your allelic effect? Not at all. Isn't it? So we have only three graphs. Right. This is a strong allele. This is a no allele. Right. This is density independent. So now this concept is clear to everybody in this class. Everybody in this class got this concept nicely now. 
Shall we make a move towards the next one? Yes, all. Okay. Come on, guys. So let's make up a move towards the next one. Yes, then. Yes, Trisha. Good. So these three graphs are the ultimate. Okay. So because I told you, no, this is how questions may be picked up. So the last uh, last 2022 question paper in the beginning of this allele equation, they gave a sequence. I mean, they gave a formula. It is going to be 1 by n into dn by dt. You remember that? Yes. So you have to revise all these graphs. Okay. So see this first graph. So this is for your logistic population. Logistic growth rate is there. No. For that it is going to be the curve. Yes. Yes, Anantara. Yes, Selva. Okay. So let us see this. If it is going to be plotted between n versus t, how is the shape? It is sigmoidal. Okay. If it is going to be exponential, how will be the graph? Yes, everybody. If it is going to be exponential, how will be the graph? Ah, for exponential, the graph is going to be like J-shaped. For logistic only, this n versus t, it is sigmoidal shape. Everybody got this point? Please note these graphs separately. Definitely questions will be coming from this topic. Okay? Right. Yes, everybody. Fantastic, ma. So, uh, uh, your, uh, your uh, sigmoid curve, it is representing your logistic. And when, when what is this x and y axis? n versus t. One more point always you note. K. What is K? What is K? K is the carrying capacity. Okay. Right. And you have to remember that the carrying capacity is going to be the maximum. Beyond that, nothing is there. Okay. So, this carrying capacity is the maximum. And how should be this carrying capacity? Yes, Ishani. How should be the carrying capacity? It should be lower than the n. Okay. So, always your carrying capacity, if you are drawing like this, no. Ah, so, this is going to be your n. Right. This is going to be your k. Okay, so be, below only it will be there. The carrying capacity is going to be below, right? So that is what it is saying here also. If you if you just see, this is going to be n, this is going to be k. Okay, k is the carrying capacity or your maximum, right? And it is going to follow the sigmoidal curve for the logistic. So if it is going to be your n versus t, n versus t, understood? Right, so now... It is going to be dn by dt. What do you mean by dn by dt? For example. Huh? So, I will just give you an example. You are going to calculate the dn by dt. n naught, it is going to be 100. In one day, this n1, it is going to become 200. Okay. So, what is your dn by dt? Hmm? What is your dn by dt? It is how many numbers it is increasing. Okay. Per respective time. So, I have taken one day. In one day, 100 has become 200. So, how much is the increase? Ah, how much is the increase now? With one hour, one day, whatever it is. Huh? One day I have given here. Okay. In one day, 100 has become 200. So, total is 200. But what is the increase? Increase is going to be like 100. Right. So, it is going to be your 100. Okay. So, if I want it in percentage. Okay. Percentage also it is going to be the same because the number is like this N naught is 100. Okay. So, it is going to be a 100% increase. So, it is it is going to be your DN by DD is 100 only. Right. So, that increase alone it is mentioned here. Okay, for example, listen carefully. I have five. What happened? Just a moment. So I have five organisms. Okay, right, fine. So I have how many organisms? Five organisms. Okay, so this five organism, it is becoming fifty. If I have five hundred, what will it will become? Ah. 5 is becoming 50. So, if I have 500, what it will become? Think and tell me. 5 is becoming 50. 
If it is 500, it will become how much? Hmm. Ah, put a zero to it. That's all, isn't it? Right. Exactly. So put a zero to it. So it is becoming 5000. Okay. So should I tell that yeah, this is uh, increasing from 5 to 50? Okay. So if I calculate the difference, it has increased by 45. If I calculate this difference, it is increasing by 4500. But is it a correct way of interpreting? No. You should check only the number of fold. The fold is the same. It is expanding by 10 times. This is expanding by 10 times. So you understood what is this 10 times? That is the constant. Okay. So if I invest 5 rupees, I will get 50 rupees. If I invest 500 rupees, I will get 5000. If I invest only 0.5, I will be getting 5. Got it? So now this is clear. Ah, it is only 10 times. That is what is going to be your dn by dt. Okay. You should not calculate it with respect to the uh, nt. Okay. Nt is not going to influence anything. All right. So coming back here. So now dn by dt versus n. So how is the curve? It is the bell shaped curve. So here my per capita rate of increase is uh, growth is increasing. Here it is constant. Here it is decreasing. Understood? Is this three points thorough to you now? Yes. So it is going to uh, increase. It is going to be equal to zero. It is going to decrease. Right. So that is what is dn by dt. It is not talking about your final numbers. It is talking whether the increase is happening or not. Whether the decreases happening or not. So is this concept thorough to you? Okay. So come on to the next one. It is dn by n into dt. This is the same. That is what we saw in the this graph. See here. Ah, in this graph we saw this. No. Where is he? Not this one. Before this. Isn't it? We saw one question. No. Ah, see here. 1 by n. Yes. Did you get my point now? This is how questions will be coming in your exams also. Here they have given 1 by n into dn by dt. So 1 by n into dn by dt means it is only going to be this uh, constant. Okay. So if it is going to be your 1 by n into dn by dt versus n, the curve should be like this. Okay. But in that question, they have asked specifically about your strong allelic effect. That is why the answer differed. Now you understood the difference between when you have to plot this and when you have to use that graph. So for that only I was explaining you both of these concepts. Understood? Yes, everybody. It is all clear now. So you had an in-depth understanding of this graphical interpretation of this question, I guess. Huh? Okay. So this numerical, this is also an another important numerical that came up in the last year. Yes. Okay. Fantastic guys. So this is also an interesting numerical. So lot of things came up uh, new like appearance, but actually this is all repeated question only. So this was earlier asked. We could have done in our PYQ session in plus. Uh, so there we could have done. Uh, yes, Silva, which one? Last one. Okay, I told you that this graph is 1 by n into dn by dt, okay, versus n, okay. So, this is declining. This is n, this is r max, no. So, this is declining. 1 by number into increase, rate of increase. So, it is declining, okay, right. But what I told you is that don't get tricked this versus this question because in this question they were asking only about the strong allelic effect if this term strong allelic effect was not given in this question then this could have been the answer that is what i was conveying to you got it everybody in this class because they gave the strong allelic effect this became the correct answer the same question if at all only this much is given then this could have been the correct answer because this is what is going to be your 1 by n into dn by dt versus n. Okay, but here they have given this as r. Okay, so that is why we, we did not select this. But if this graph, it is going to contain these parameters like 1 by n into dn by dt 
versus n then this should have been the correct one okay so two mistakes are there in this graph that is why we didn't select it got it everyone okay so shall we make a move towards the next question come on everybody in this class cheer up for the next question fantastic right so see this question the diagram below okay so it is depicting the energy flow within a single tropic level where i what is i we could have done this in the plus class plus students you could have note this yes okay so i it is the ingested ingested uh, uh, assimilated digested totally we have done right okay same question is only coming i is the ingested n a that means it is not at all assimilated okay right and then r it is going to be the respiration right r is for the respiration pn it is going to be the biomass okay so before this i would like to revise few points for you okay so before we are uh, going to take this question i will tell you few key revision points for this such that it will become uh, quite uh, easy for you okay right fine everybody just a moment i will change this uh, uh, background okay right now i think i can write it perfectly okay fantastic right guys so first there is a deer okay right the deer it is seeing a tree okay right the tree is weighing 1000 kg okay right will the deer eat all the 1000 kg will the deer eat all the 1000 kg is it possible for the deer to eat the total 1000 kg tree no isn't it so what the deer will eat it will eat a maximum of 10 kg or will take 100 kg 10 is better i guess right yes so 10 out of 1000 it is only being utilized okay right so it is eating only 10 kg out of the available 1000 and if i take this 10 kg do you think that the total 10 kg will be assimilated no no it will put all the fecus right so because the cellulose is all there it cannot digest the cellulose properly so from the 10 kg only 1 kg is eaten inside it is only assimilated okay right so in this 1 kg do you think that the total 1 kg will uh, will be absorbed huh will this total 1 kg is absorbed into your uh, biomass and all no maybe 0.1 kg is only going into the biomass got it right so this is the background information that you have to remember okay so before you are going to do this question understood everybody yes so with this background if you read this question you will be getting uh, the hint of what this question is all about okay so shall we now read this question in a better manner okay come on everybody in this class should try with this question okay so see that they have given that i is ingested na is not at all assimilated r is respiration respiration is like an expense it is like your tax and pn is going to be the biomass ah assimilation means eating ma eating okay so you are assimilating it inside okay right excretion is the not assimilated one not assimilated is only excretion okay got it fine fine yes ah uh, so now let us take it okay so they have given that right so they have given that pn minus 1 what is that pn minus 1 it is 1000 okay they have given that pn minus 1 is going to be 1000 and they have given one more clue what is the one more clue i i means ingestion okay i divided by pn minus 1 is equal to 20 percentage 
okay right so you know the pn minus 1 what is pn minus 1 pn minus 1 is going to be 1000 right you don't know i right fine but you know you know this equal value it is 20 by 100 yes right so now can you calculate this i hmm. now can you calculate this i everybody should answer this see i divided by 1 uh, i mean i divided by pn minus 1 based on this question only they have given that it is going to be 20 percentage okay so now it is clear ah, so now you know that this is going to be your i i i mean your uh, total answer of i by pn minus 1 is 20 you know this pn minus 1 based on this question only it is 1000 so what is your i mm, very good so i is going to be ah, 2 into 100 so i is 200 got it everybody in this class now you got it right so they have given that a by i it is equal to 35 percentage okay you don't know a now you know i know yes ah. so your a by 200 it is equal to 35 by 100 right yes so what is a now what is a now come on everybody simple problem what is a now a is equal to uh, 70 everybody got it so a is equal to 70 easy or not yes guys yes okay now coming back here pn by a pn by a it is 20 by 100 okay you don't know the pn but you know a is 70 okay so i'll write here okay so i'll just erase this and write here okay so it is going to be 20 by 100 okay and you don't know the pn and you know that a is 70 this is equal to 20 by 100 right fine so what is your pn pn is 14 everybody got it everybody got it the value of pn yes that's all guys literally that's all this question it is for how many marks this question it is for your four marks question okay right so they have asked uh, you which of the following answers are going to be correct okay all right so uh, this is uh, this is what they have given okay so they have uh, given you they have asked your value of your uh, pn so what is your pn pn is going to be your 14 okay by that only you will know that isn't it yes so pn is going to be your 14 right so that you know fine and uh, next uh, they have asked about not assimilated okay what is assimilated what is assimilated ah. based on our calculation what is assimilated come on guys did you get it what is going to be your assimilated assimilated is 70 okay right yes ah, b is the correct answer correct mark assimilation is 70 right if assimilation is going to be 70 uh, so they are they are uh, they are asking for your not assimilated okay so not assimilated is going to be your uh, your total minus assimilated so your total is going to be 200 isn't it right so your total is 200 so 200 minus 70 is 130 got it yes so is it clear now how did we calculate this ah, i is going to be your ingested correct i is ingested exactly so ingested is what we calculated first no ah, ingested is what we calculated first do you remember that hmm? so ingested is what you calculated first ingested is 200 right ah, so 200 minus uh, this fellow hmm? yes minus your assimilation so ingested minus assimilation is going to be 200 minus 70 so 200 minus 70 it is going to be 130 it is not assimilated right and the pn by a pn you know that it is going to be 20 yes and a it is going to be your 70 
so 20 by 70 is 4 calories and what is going to be your respiration this alone is important respiration is a minus pn so it is going to be 56 calories got it everybody so isn't it a easy problem for you all huh? so don't uh, strain much uh, seriously such questions may look wired if you just have a look but seriously, these questions are very, very easy. So, don't worry about any big question, something like that. Okay, it is all going to be an easy one only. Got it, everybody? Yes? So, now it is clear to everybody in this class. Shall we make up a move towards the next one? Ah, come on, guys. So, let's make up a move towards the next one. And another important concept for the day. Shall we see what is this concept? Yes? Huh? Yes. Absolutely, all values are given only. You have to simply use your logical lenses to find it. Right, find everybody. So, let us, yeah, so let us make up a move towards the next question. Ah, okay, fine guys. So, let us see this. The table, it is showing the bird species and their abundance in the three habitats. Okay, so what are the three habitats? P, Q and R, these are the three habitats. So, see this habitat A. Okay, I'm going to ask you questions directly. I'm not going to take this question. I'll ask you directly. So, here, this one is 120. What is the total? Hmm. What is the total? Come on, everybody in this class. What is going to be the total? Ah. 140, 45, 46, 47. Out of 147, this is only going to be 120. So, it is dominant or it is diverge. First, tell me that. This P is dominant or it is diverge. Everybody in this class should tell this. Ah, yeah, for 4 marks, it is, it is very easy. Ah, so, this is dominant, isn't it? Because only one fellow is dominating this class. Right? So, this is going to be the dominant one. If dominance is there, no diversity. Diversity means everybody should excel. That is diversity. Dominance means only one man show. Okay. So, this uh, habitat P is going to be dominant. Okay. So, look about this Q. Huh? It is even. How is this Q? It is even. How many of you agree with that? Huh? How many of you agree with that? It is even. My God. Got switched off. Okay. Right. So, how many of you agree that this is going to be uh, even? Everybody agree? Okay. So, this is going to be the evenness. Fantastic. Right. So, now come to R. Is this dominant much? Not much dominant. Is it even? Not much even. Uh, but this fellow is quiet, isn't it? Uh, so, they are asking in this question, which of the following options represent the correct match so it is it is asking the decreasing order of diversity what they have asked decreasing order of diversity diversity wise which one is decreasing that means the first one should be highly diverse right ah, it should not be dominant okay so which one is highly diverse among the three which is highly diverse Highly diverse means it should not be, it should not be dominant at all. That is the meaning. Highly diverse means it should never be dominant. So, which is never dominant here? It is Q. Okay. So, in this decreasing order of diversity means who should come first? Your Q should come first. Q is the maximum fellow. Okay. Right. Next, who will come? Hmm. Next is R. Okay. Right. Finally, only your P should come because P is going to be highly dominant. So, dominancy and your diversity are oppositely related. Okay. Don't confuse it with species richness concept. It will seriously trick you if you collapse it with the species richness. Species richness is totally different from this concept. Okay. Right. You just understand that if it is going to be dominant, it is not diverse. I will just put it in uh, uh, one more uh, slide. Yes. 
such that you will understand this concept better okay right so just a moment guys ah uh, okay right so please understand this concept fully okay so if it is going to be a dominant okay so dominance means right it is not at all diverse okay somebody is dominating it is not diverse okay but will it be even will it be even no no so there is no evenness okay right fine the other case if it is going to be ha huh? so it is going to be even okay right fine that means that many are coming so it is going to be diverse okay so many will be coming okay if it is uh, even like many will be coming evenness index okay so this is totally different from that of the species richness species richness it is telling you about the number of species what is your species richness telling about it is telling about the number of species how many number of species is present this is what is called as the species richness so now you understood what is species richness what is evenness what is dominance yes <laughs> okay fantastic guys so these are all the simple simple terms but uh, no many are getting tricked so that is why i just uh, wanted to you know show you here okay so here they are asking about the uh, decreasing order of diversity so decreasing order of diversity means what they are asking for mm. decreasing order of diversity means first who should come first it should be the even one because even one is more diverse okay right fine even one is more diverse and who is the final one final one is dominant if it is dominant it is less diverse okay an intermediate should be the between so now you got this concept everybody in this class okay guys okay so i couldn't read your comments because uh, my mobile got switched off so kindly excuse me if at all you are asking something to me right so let's see the next question yes which one of the following options represent the correct combination of terms that are matched incorrectly the first option says that dd ntp chain termination it is a correct statement because if at all you are using your sangers method okay you require your 3 prime oh for extending but this is what your d ntp will contain okay and what your d ntp will lack what your d ntp will lack d ntp it will lack your 2 prime oh okay so d ntp will have only 2 prime h because it is a deoxy ntp but if it is a dd ntp dd ntp lacks the 3 prime o also dd ntp it will have the 3 prime h so chain cannot be further extended because for phosphodiester bond you require a bond formed between 3 prime oh and 5 prime phosphate this 3 prime oh is what is lacked in your dd ntp so this is the exactly correct method for your chain termination southern blot southern it is for dna western it is for protein south western means both your dna and protein so this is also a correct statement nothing wrong in this okay 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity it is helpful in the pcr my god pcr it is like a fast amplification kind of thing okay so in pcr see for example i am just discussing this question very quickly so how you will write you will write very slowly and very neatly or half as only you will write such that you can complete the syllabus definitely this will be a rough note half as only you will write quick 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 before the slide is going but if at all you are writing for your record book you will write very very slowly okay that kind of slowness it is what for this proof reading is 
but in pcr it is a very quick process so never ever pcr will do the proof reading that is why even though there is some mistake also it is accepted it is highly processive but proof reading is not there in your pcr okay so yeast to hybrid system it is for protein protein interaction correct right so they have asked for your incorrect one no so absolutely which is going to be the correct or incorrect option option c is only going to be the incorrect option and that is the correct option for our question fantastic guys so let's make up a move towards the next question i think since yesterday i mean last day before yesterday we are discussing this question on this beta catenin and the sea urchins okay so let's take this so during the normal development okay so read this question very carefully i told you no repeat the questions Ah, so last time I think in that video you could have seen in my repeated PYQs for your CSER I told you that this concept is repeated many number of times. Once again it is proved in 2022 also. Okay, so this normal development of sea urchin, this beta catenin, it is accumulated in the micromere. Yes, micromeres is what they accumulate the beta catenin, and this micromere will become your endoderm and mesoderm. that is well understood if gsk3 is blocked what is the role of gsk3 gsk3 it is an enzyme this enzyme will degrade will degrade whom will degrade the beta catenin right yes but in the dorsal region alone you have a rescuer who is that it is going to be the d shield protein this is only going to help this d shield protein is only going to help to inhibit this gsk such that in the dorsal alone your beta catenin will be high this concept we revised already right fine so now let us see this particular question let's see what they have asked in this question in this question they say that they have blocked this gsk3 if gsk3 is blocked everywhere your beta catenin will be there that is what you have to understand now read this question your beta catenin accumulation it will be inhibited can this be true if gsk3 is very happy why the hell it will be inhibited it should be promoted eliminate very quickly four marks guys beta catenin will accumulate in all the blastula so it will form an ectodermal ball never ectoderm it is an it is an ventral fate isn't it ectoderm is a ventral fate that is why it is one half is right but second half is wrong beta catenin will accumulate in nuclei of all blastula right it will form your endoderm and mesoderm exactly that is your dorsal fate so that is what is going to take place right beta catenin it will accumulate in the nuclei in the large micromeres na huh? so that will be inhibited so it will leading uh, no not at all it is not at all going to get inhibited so only correct answer is option c can you now uh, no agree with me that csr questions are repeated and you will be getting such a simple questions see here but you should have the patience to read every question in the exam tension what happens many students left these question these are 2022 questions i have a bunch of students who really know this concept very well but this morning shift paper many of them were not even knowing that this question came okay so please be careful while reading and selecting the question that is only very very important right okay guys so let's make a move so progression across your g1 yes boundary it is followed by the entry into the s phase it is promoted by activation of which of the following it is your cdk4 cyclin d cdk2 cyclin e 4 6 and cyclin d 4 6 and cyclin d and e which is going to be the correct answer yes everybody so we have seen that d e a b yes this is cyclin okay so remember this clue every time and then cdk 4 6 2 2 1 right yes so d e a b 4 6 2 2 please remember this if you remember this definitely i think many times you could have seen in the plus class right so this is going to be your g1 yes g2 m 
okay so in this question they are asking about s phase so s phase is your cyclin e and cdk2 very direct no ha huh. so if it is they have asked for your g phase it should have been cyclin d and then cdk4 and 6 if it is g2 a2 and if it is going to be your mitotic it is b and cdk1 got it everybody so now you got an total idea of what this question is about i'll tell you this is also a repeated question many times such questions have come even in our class we could have done many such problems deab cdk 46221 right these are the basic concepts ma so please uh, don't forget to revise these basics basics are always standard csir is not asking somewhere else from if you know the concepts definitely you can answer but the only trick is you have to read the question paper properly you have to understand that all the questions are there don't get stick to few questions and don't skip the easy ones see this is all 20 22 questions only it is not a tough question at all it is not at all a tough question paper if you have read properly definitely you could have cracked yes okay don't worry this time i want everybody to crack the examination right guys so given below are the terms that is related to phytoremediation so shall we check it out okay so excluders heavy metal protein transporters right hyper accumulators high biomass non accumulators right okay everybody come on so what is going to be the accumulators ah huh. accumulators means what or excluder hmm any one point if you know you can just click this question very very easy question <coughs> sorry guys ha huh. yes you want the basics you want to revise i'll help you out right don't worry i'll help you out accumulators accumulators means it will be above the ground okay so compared to the soil everything will be above the ground okay so which one can be this accumulators if you say it is hyper accumulator yes ha huh, it is going to be the aerial parts right so that is what is going to be the hyper accumulator okay and uh, what is going to be a non accumulator yes non and what is then excluder excluder is for the root okay so excluder is going to be in the soil okay so it is going to be in the soil okay all right fine and uh, this is a simple question from your phytoremediation okay see this will you believe your eyes a question of hardy weinberg equilibrium came up in your csr net even this year 2022 it came see the simple question ah uh, so they have given that homozygote okay homozygote means q squared it is 0.04 i told you if it is going to be the genotype always it is squared q squared or p squared or 2pq if they have given it as an allele then only it will be q or p if it is a genotype or like homozygous term is given it is q squared so q squared is going to be 0.04 so what is q 0.2 what is p 1 minus q so that is going to be point 8 got it right fine so now they have asked about the homozygous dominant allele so p squared p squared is point 64 okay if it is for 100 it is going to be 64 such a simple question you will not believe your eyes only that such questions are still existing on this planet yes 2022 question definitely see is your trend is there you cannot ignore the trend see one more repetitive question it is techniques ah uh, so 3d structure so many times uh, what happened many a times he could have done this question ah uh, it is regarding the 3d structure 3d structure means x ray nmr here they have given your nmr right ionic charge ionic charge is obviously based on isoelectric point binding specificity affinity see do you believe that this is a four mark question four marks very very simple question so a1 b2 c3 d4 yes nothing very simple question 3d it is nmr 
what about 2D? CD, right? 1D, it is FTIR, okay? Right? Ionic charge is isoelectric focusing based upon your PI they separate. Affinity is binding and molecular size ultra centrifugation or gel permeation chromatography. Okay? Got it? So, this is understandable. This is easy. Agree with this? <laughs> okay. So, see the next question. This is also one of our favorite question. We could have done this many times before the examination. And uh, select the correct statement related to phylogeny of primates. So you remember, I told several times the last batch, this will definitely come. Ultimately, it came. Right? Okay. So, follow those topics without fail. Alright. So, lemurs, they are closely related to lorziers than to gibbon. Exactly correct. Yes? Okay. So, you have to memorize the trick such that you can solve this question easily. Okay. So, let us see what is that. Okay. So, before that, I would like to tell you something. The CSER net subscription, it is going to go up. So, before it is off, so please do come up with a subscription. Yes. So, for 12 months, somebody was asking, it is 13 points. Okay. So, you can use my code Saranya Live. Okay. It is going to get you good discounts. And definitely you will have a good interaction with me during the session to make it off. Right. Okay. And the plus subscriptions are really very good because you take in the live class. You will have the structured courses, unlimited access, weekly test. Iconic or still more better because you will have your books ready soon. So you can you know, make it out. And uh, yes. So this bio beakers batch is beginning from September 1st. So, I am going to begin up you know, with a very important unit of ecology, simple unit but very important. Okay, right. So, yes, we are in which question now? Huh. This is done, right? Okay, this one. Okay, right. So, see this? So, now I will tell you a clue. Okay, right. Goa. Goa. Okay. Go chimp. What is this? Human. Human is last. You know that human is lost. Final. Before that chimpanzee. Before that it is gorilla. Before that it is going to be orangutans. Okay. Orangutans. Before that it is gibbons. So what clue I made? Goa. Go chimp. So gibbons. Orangutan. Gorilla. Chimpanzee. Human. Goa. Go chimp. Okay, right. Yes, and uh, I think old age monkeys uh, will go ahead. Huh? Yes, I think there's a small mistake here. Okay, so this should be your old age monkeys. Old age monkey example is mantril. So if you have watched Lion King, you can remember this easily. Mantril, old age monkey. Then it is the new age monkey. Okay, and then gibbons, orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee and human. Before that, it is going to be this lemur. Yes, loris. And then Taurus, okay, Tarsius, Tarsius, yes. So, this is the order, okay. So, Lemur, Loris, Tarsius, old age monkeys, Mantril, new age monkeys, and then Go, Goa, Guchimp, yes. Okay, so now let us take this question. It is going to be simple to you. Shall we see this? Okay, Lemurs and Lorsius are very close than the Gibbons because I told you the order. It is going to be Lemur. And then it is going to be Loris. And then it is going to be Torsier. Right. And then it is going to be Old Age Monkey. Then it is New Age Monkey. Okay. Then it is going to be Gibbon. Then it is going to be Urankatan. Right. And then it is going to be Gorilla. Right. Yes. Ah, so this is Gibbon. Gibbon Gorilla, don't confuse. Goa, Go Chimp. It can, isn't it? Apes. Ah, so Apes is there. I forgot the Apes. Okay. So Goa is for Apes. Okay. So Goa, uh, Go, this is Apes. Okay. Go and the Chimp. Yes, Gorilla. Gorilla is followed by Chimpanzee. So next after Chimpanzee, it is going to be the human. Got it? So this is the order. Okay. So now let us have a look at this uh, question. Then it will become pretty easy for you. Okay, right. So, in this question, they are saying that your Urankotans, okay, so this Urankotans, it is closer to Lorsier, is it? 
no uran kota should be closer only to gibbons not to large shapes so this is eliminated tarsiers and old world monkeys are same never it is not the same it is different ha huh? mandril is different from tarsiers humans are close to the new world monkeys than the orangutan no new world monkeys are far away uh, your orangutan is at least near right goa gochimp don't forget it it is it is going to be simple and easy for you only yes so all this are very very nice questions in the last year so i wish you that in the current year also you will be getting simple questions like this okay right so this is your homework question so in the next class remind me about this question this is your homework question take it up solve and come if you are not able to solve ask me next day i will teach you this okay fantastic guys so ah uh, this one is simple we'll finish this class with this simple question two marks see very simple it is what is the pattern of cleavage in mammals mammals radial no who will be radial sea urchin sea urchin is only going to be radial and what is going to be spiral spiral is ha uh, yes fam Uh, flat worm annelid and mollusk and rotational is human human or mammal mammal and nematode m n is rotational so this is the correct answer bilateral is tunicate examples you should definitely remember simplest question only likewise what is going to be your discoidal a uh, microlithical and all these things superficial everything is important guys seriously if you study it in a proper manner everybody can crack this examination so don't forget if at all you are subscribing for plus use my code sarnia live such that you will get an endless support from all right guys take care i'll meet you up in another interesting session have a nice